<clears throat> Greetings, everybody. Ron Chastner here. Um, this uh, this Bible study um, essentially is uh, go going to cover uh, seven verses in Galatians. Um, these are verses, I believe, if you study them carefully, um, will, they will reveal wisdom all the way back 2,000 years ago that God is sharing with us uh, about commerce. Uh, and this is going to be part of my series on commerce according to the Bible. Um, and the, the, the topic that I want to point out to the viewers in these verses <clears throat> is that these verses will reveal the difference between being a public citizen <clears throat> uh, and a private citizen. Uh, the difference between living under God's law, otherwise known as equity, or living under man's law, which would be referred to as common law or martial law or man's law. Okay, so um, I'll put these verses up. I'm sure on the screen um, when I'm going to the editing mode. But here's what it says. Galatians chapter 4, and this is the NIV version. doesn't matter really. It, um, it'll still reveal to you when you look at it closely. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> I'll read the entire script uh, scripture and, um, and then we'll go over it carefully. Uh, what I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he has no different, sorry, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, verse 2, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father, verse 3. So also, when we are under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world, verse 4. Uh, but when the, the set time has fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, verse 5, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Uh, verse 6, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, father. Of course, Abba is Hebrew for father. And then uh, verse 7, finally, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are a child, God has made you also an heir. Okay, so let's, uh, let's break down some... Um, symbols, uh, symbolic uh, meanings here. Now, just remember when you study the Bible, and I've got a lot of Bible studies up on this YouTube channel, um, uh, a lot of the scripture is there specifically for uh, literal application. A lot of it also is there for uh, symbolic application. Okay, so um, there's a couple things you want to um, understand. Uh, if you're watching this particular video, you're likely already oriented to this, but uh, I, I must do this anyway for those who aren't oriented. You've got um, man's law and you've got God's law. Man's law is the public side uh, where, where everything... Uh, that you do in commerce uh, has your name attached to it in all capital letters. That's not who you are, although if you behave as that, then you are that all capital letter corporate fiction. It's a dead entity and so forth. Uh, that's why attorneys are needed in the courtroom, because the defendant is always listed as an all capital letter name, and a dead corporate fiction cannot be heard, so it has to be a turned 
for by an attorney who speaks on behalf of that dead corporate fiction. And then you've got, uh, so the all capital letter name is uh, a dead corporate fiction, and that's where all of commerce lives in, in fiction and fraud. And then you've got equity. <clears throat> um, equity is God's law. And uh, God says, if you don't injure another party or you don't injure another property person's property, then or another party's property, um, uh, then then there is no crime. Uh, the word person in the law dictionary, you can look it up. It's a dead corporate fiction. So you got to be careful about your terms. But in any event, <clears throat> you know, the public side, man's law, you've got millions of laws and statutes that hook you into liability. Uh, which is how commerce generates revenue. God's law, if you uh, if you live under God's law and under God's kingdom, you rise above man's law. And as long as you don't injure another party or another party's property, there is no crime. Um, examples of that would be a topic of a different uh, video. All right, so let's look at this again, knowing that there's two different realms. There's the realm of fraud and fiction, which is commerce, which is the public side. And then there's the realm of the private side, which is equity or God's law. So looking at from from with that in mind, what I am saying, this is verse one in Galatians four. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave although he owns the whole estate. All right, so what does that mean? Uh, under age would typically say that, that until you reach a certain age, um, um, your parents or a guardian or a trustee manages whatever you own. And so it's saying you still own what you own, what you, what you have, uh, which would be, in my opinion, if you're a, a follower of the Lord, um, a believer, then you own the riches of the kingdom. But until until you become of age uh, on the private side, that would mean to have. Uh, it's not a. It's not a, a an age like eighteen or twenty one. It's it's an age of spiritual maturity to understand the difference between public and private. To understand the difference between uh, at law and equity. So and, and for uh, you're, you're an heir to the riches of the kingdom, but while you're uninformed, then you, you maintain yourself as a debtor, or here in this word it says he is no different from a slave. So a slave would be one who is indebted. A slave is one who owns things but has no control over them. So in commerce, this would be screaming out to me that this means that you have the opportunity to become a private citizen and you have the opportunity to live under equity and to rise above man's law without uh, uh, and, and be able to to deal with things in commerce, which is under fraud and fiction. But you could stay in truth and integrity and, and equity in God's law. But until you learn how to do that, until you become mature enough to do that, you are going to maintain yourself no different than a slave or one who is enslaved or one who is indebted. OK, so uh, uh, ponder that one. That's Galatians 4.1. Then we go on to verse two. The heir, uh, like the beneficiary, is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. <clears throat> OK, uh, well, we could go off in a couple of directions on this, but I think it's important to just to see a couple of them and then you can discern for yourself what it means. The heir, of course, would be uh, you, the, the, the estate that you own, the riches of the kingdom uh, as a child of God. But until you understand all of that, uh, you're subject to someone else taking care of all of your assets um, uh, through a guardianship or through a trusteeship until the time set by his father. Well, so if you're 
if you're living your life in a worldly fashion, then worldly things are influenced by the father of the world, which is the devil, which is the adversary. And so as long as you keep your focus on worldly things and worldly education and worldly indoctrination, you're, you're never going to inherit what is yours. It'll always be run by trustees and guardians. And in my opinion, that would be the public side. That could be anything from uh, uh, governmental agencies from all the way from the federal level down to the state, county, city, local levels. Um, and then, of course, uh, the trusteeships um, and guardians uh, could also mean anything that's in your all capital letter name, which would be your bank accounts, your driver's license, your social security account, your birth certificate account, um, um, your credit card accounts, uh, it, uh, your car notes, your, your mortgages, all of these things um, are going to be enslaving you uh, uh, as a debtor uh, and you're not going to receive the true value and benefit of that until you make your father uh, the Holy One, the Lord, rather than the devil who's tricking you into worldly ways. And until you learn equity and God's law and make God the father uh, uh, of, of your life, uh, then you're following worldly ways and all of that which is yours that you are to inherit are going to be subject <clears throat> to all of the interference of of uh, the uh, uh, the agencies, the federal, state, and local agencies, uh, and so forth. Uh, let's continue on in verse number three. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Well, that's very simple. The elemental spiritual forces of the world are are led by the father of the world, which is the devil. And, and again, under age, uh, the world would want you to think that that's age 18 or 21 or 25 or something like that, if you get into uh, estate planning and things of that nature. But um, most of the states in the United States are, say, you're of legal age when you get 18 or 21. Uh, so this uh, th that would be what the worldly reference to underage is, but I believe what this is saying underage would be until you rise to a spiritual maturity to understand the difference between what we've spoken of in the last 12 or 13 minutes. All right, let's continue on. Um, well, let me just one more thing. So, so also when we're underage, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. So uh, uh, so, okay, so slavery, debt, bondage, that kind of thing. You're not going to get anything released to you uh, of what your your inheritance of the kingdom is until you give up the, sp the elemental spiritual forces of the world and give up the slavery or the enslavement or the bondage or the debt uh, uh, that you believe that you have according to... Uh, the public side. All right, then we go to verse four. Um, this is uh, this is interesting. But but when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law. All right, so we know God sent His Son. That's Jesus or Yeshua or the Messiah. Um, so in God's timing. Uh, uh, he sent his son and he was born of a woman born under the law. Um, I believe that this is a clear example in scripture um, of what we do. And again, I've, I've said this in previous videos that commerce is designed directly out of the Bible. Well, if you stop and think about how one 
goes into slavery in our in our society here and becomes a public citizen when does that happen it happens when um, when when a child is born in a hospital in the last couple of generations three or four generations let's say um, um, it has become common practice for the hospital to come into the the birthing mother uh, the birthing mother uh, with some documents uh, that are called a birth certificate or birth certificate application and she signs and consents unknowingly what she's about to do is to make that baby a public citizen uh, she's not doing it maliciously she's doing it because the indoctrination of our community and our society at large uh, says that is procedure now whereas if you look back uh, at my ripe old age and you go back maybe two generations all births uh, were recorded inside your Bible, just as, as marriage, uh, marriages were. They were recorded in your Bible. Now they're recorded in the Secretary of the State's office, the birth certificates, or in the local counties or cities for marriage licenses. And what those certificates are doing is they're, you're yielding authority and jurisdiction uh, over that, whatever that is being recorded. So in the case of the baby, uh, it goes into the Secretary of the State's office, and now the state has just created, you know, within eight or ten days after the birth of this baby, the baby, through its unalienable rights, was a free private citizen, a sovereign private citizen. And because the mother unknowingly has filed a birth certificate into the public record, that baby has now been engaged in contracts, which will continue on until that baby grows up and learns the wisdom of some of the education that I share uh, where you can go back and reclaim the private citizen status and uh, and give up all of those contracts that uh, that you're involved with that you don't know that you're involved with. So um, getting back to this verse, uh, to me, verse four, uh, born of a wo born of a woman, born under the law, uh, this is very clear if you, if you understand what it is that I'm sharing with you, that the, the woman is given these papers and then the papers are filed in the public record and now that baby is under the law on the public side and then put into bondage or slavery, if you will, uh, uh, of, of all the millions of laws and statutes uh, when in fact the baby was born as a child of God with the inheritance of the riches of the kingdom all of that has been given up with the filing of the birth certificate and all of that can be reclaimed through some uh, appropriate paperwork all right so let's continue on now verse 5 to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption of sonship you see this clearly points out that one can redeem oneself from man's law and be adopted as a son or sonship of God back into equity under God's law if one has the wisdom and the education and does the appropriate disclaimers, rescissions, and paperwork and status corrections and so forth. All right, so verse 6 uh, because you are his sons, God sent, who is his? That would be God. God sent the spirit of the son into our hearts. The spirit calls out Abba, Father. Okay, the word Abba, of course, is Hebrew for father. Um, so our spirit, okay, our spirit, if you ever go through life and, and you think, oh my gosh, I don't know what the heck is going on here in this world. I'm working you know, I'm working 20 hours a day, 15 hours a day. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing something else. And and yet I'm still in bondage. I still don't feel like like something is 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 going right. I don't understand it. I don't know. But I see that there's something that's wrong and I just can't put my finger on it. And I think God gives us that innate sense uh, to see in our spirit 
and we call out to the Father. So if we call out to the Father and we gain wisdom through studying the words in the Bible, like we're doing right here in Galatians chapter 4, and you gain wisdom, God will show you, God will reveal to you that that spirit that says, I feel like something's wrong, he'll show you how to correct it, okay? And part of those corrections, again, would be um, to uh, create some documentation to reclaim your status and to rescind any contracts that you would have been put in uh, unknowingly and unwittingly, like that birth certificate uh, that puts you as a public citizen and puts you into enslavement uh, in our society. Okay, verse 7. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also his heir. Okay, so this might be a tough pill to swallow for most of you who, uh, who are uh, viewing this video, especially if you don't have the orientation of the difference between uh, public and private, a public citizen and a private citizen, or... Um, uh, equity versus martial law. But if you do some research and study on it, then uh, you would you would surely uh, get some revelation. But look, what is this saying? Uh, so you are no longer a slave, uh, you're, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you uh, also an heir. Um, and so what that's saying is, is that once you do these corrective measures, uh, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says something about, oh, it's Philippians 4.19, one of my favorites, you know, uh, God provides for all of your needs. And the second part of that is according to his riches and glory. Well, those riches and glory that God has in store for you, you don't have to wait till you go to heaven uh, if you're a believer in order to take advantage of that. What th these verses are saying is you become an heir to those riches in, of the kingdom as a son, an heir of God. Uh, and once you once you do that and once you gain the wisdom and the knowledge of doing the status correction, uh, the paperwork to unenslave yourself, to unencumber yourself from the uh, uh, the bondage of being a public citizen. And going back to the riches of the, the kingdom of being a private citizen, and I might just add a caveat, with much discernment. Remember, the Bible teaches, uh, for much which is given, much is required. And so if you're given these riches uh, through a status correction, you need to also have the knowledge and discernment and the wisdom of what to do and what not to do, so as not to upset a system that's in place that the government has put in place, a tough system uh, that keeps bad people in abeyance uh, so that you and I can be protected uh, and we don't have to worry uh, or be concerned about bad people in our community and it prevents chaos. So you have to do these things uh, privately, you have to do them quietly, you have to do them appropriately, you have to learn how to how to defend your position in those in those papers and that paperwork, <clears throat> how to file them properly, how to stand on your paperwork um, so as not to be tricked back into liability of a new contract uh, and how to rescind all of those contracts that you're engaged in unknowingly and unwittingly. And so um, that's uh, what I have to say about Galatians chapter four, verses one through seven. These are Wonderful, wonderful verses to ponder, to discern, to study, and then to compare your notes with what it is to be a private citizen in equity rather than staying as a public citizen uh, under martial law. Um, you go from uh, essentially being a sole beneficiary uh, to the, the riches of the kingdom rather than being the liable party for all of the obligation which is imposed upon you as a public citizen. I hope that um, this has been helpful uh, in our series here on commerce according to the Bible. Uh, this is the design uh, of, of, of our commerce 
and it's done right out of the Bible. You can see clearly in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. I hope it's been interesting and informative, and uh, uh, thank you for your time and viewing, and uh, good day.